By the end of this video, you'll know what an epidural is, how it's administered, and if you should ask for one in labor. Many women accept an epidural because it's the norm. It's offered freely, yet few know what's actually in it and what it can do to mom and baby. You may even think it's not even possible to have a baby without an epidural, but I'm here to tell you it is. I've done it three times. And I want you to know that an epidural is not just a harmless pain reliever. There's more to it than that. I'm going to tell you what's in the epidural and what its risk and benefits are. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll tell you just how you can have a natural labor without getting an epidural. My name is Lindsay and I created Wellness Family. I created this video to help you make healthy decisions for yourself and for your kids. Let's jump into some quick facts about an epidural. In 2008 in the US, 60% of women got an epidural in labor. 10 years later, in 2018, 71% of women got an epidural. That equates to about 2.7 million women who received epidurals during labor. In France, the statistics are pretty similar. About 77% of women got an epidural, but in the UK, only 40% of women got an epidural, which means the majority of women in the UK are having birth without getting epidurals. Epidurals were first used in 1909, but more regularly used after the 1940s. The ingredients in epidurals can vary, but they tend to consist of things like chloroprocaine, lidocaine, they can be combined with opioids and narcotics like fentanyl or morphine. These are pretty serious drugs. They're honestly not that different than cocaine or morphine, which is generally given when people are about to die. They're, they're intense drugs. They're not just, you know, Tylenol. You know, lidocaine is far more similar to cocaine than it is to Tylenol or ibuprofen. Now let's talk about how an epidural is administered. First, you'll have to do some lab work. The doctors want to make sure that you don't have any health issues or blood issues that could make an epidural higher risk for you. Then they're going to give you an IV. They want to make sure they get a full liter of fluid in you because epidurals can drop your blood pressure significantly, which is harmful to mom and baby. So they want to make sure you have a lot of fluid in your body. You have to do a consultation with an anesthesiologist. You have to make sure you go to the bathroom and then you have to sign a lot of paperwork. And the reason for this is OBGYNs know that epidurals have high risk and they don't want to be liable if things go wrong. That for me personally is one of the reasons I, I just want to avoid it at all costs. If I have to sign paperwork that this could potentially harm me permanently, then it's not something I want to sign up for. So just know that that paperwork is there for an important reason. Once you've gone through all that paperwork and everything, then you'll either sit up or lay on your side and they'll inject the site on your back with a local anesthetic. They'll then inject the epidural needle into your spine and then they'll put a catheter through the needle. Once the catheter is in, they'll take the needle out and they'll take tape the catheter to your back. That catheter will stay in until after you have your baby. And what it does is it injects pain medication into the space between your vertebrae and your spinal cord. Um, it, it generally takes about 15 minutes to work, um, but it can last however long you need it to last. And some are continuously releasing drugs into your body. Some do it at specific intervals. Um, I've even read in some countries that the woman has control. They can press a button when they want more drugs um, injected into their body. Um, and then once your baby's born, they'll take out the catheter and um, you'll slowly start to get feeling back to your lower body. Now let's talk about some of the risks, specifically to a mom when she gets an epidural. So first, she can't walk when she has an epidural. They do administer, some hospitals may have walking epidurals, um, but even these often mean you can't walk because you have you know, IVs or monitors on you and, and it's just maybe uncomfortable. So in most cases, you will not be able to get up and move around and try different positions or try to walk your baby out. Um, you'll be pretty stuck just in your bed. Once you have an epidural, you've started a cascade of interventions. So you've already had an IV, then you get the epidural. You're gonna continuously have to have an IV with fluids because again, they wanna make sure your blood pressure doesn't drop. They also wanna make sure they have access to your vein to put you to sleep should you need an emergency C-section. Again, an epidural is gonna raise your risk of things kind of going awry, and so they wanna be ready to um, get that baby out in a couple minutes if they need to. You also have to have continuous fetal monitoring. So what this means is they will attach kind of a monitor to your um, abdomen, which will measure your contractions and measure the baby's heart rate. And again, this is not something you can just, you know, stop so you can go for a walk. They are gonna wanna keep an eye on that baby's heart rate at all times because they know that 
the epidural can affect the baby and affect mom poorly. Um, I've said this before, but again, epidurals can cause hypotension. So where the mom's blood pressure drops significantly, which is definitely risky to the baby and mom. So that's why they're going to continue to give you fluids, which can cause you to swell up, feel uncomfortable, have a really have to go to the bathroom. Um, I've had mom, I know moms who've gotten epidurals and lots of fluids in labor and they still look like a balloon, you know, a week or two after having their baby. Um, epidurals may make it hard to pee, so they may put a catheter in, which nobody wants that. Um, it can make you nauseous. Epidurals can make you itchy, they can make you shivery, have ringing in your ears. It can make you more at risk for getting a fever in labor. So 19% of moms who've had an epidural end up having a fever, where only 2% of moms who didn't have an epidural end up with a fever. If you have a fever, they're likely gonna wanna give you antibiotics, rule out any um, infection. And then these antibiotics can have long lasting effects on you and baby, but they can, you know, destroy all probiotics, all that good gut bacteria, which makes baby more likely to get ear infections or asthma or eczema. So you want to try to avoid um, those antibiotics for sure. As we get into more serious risks, again, they're less... Um, less common but they do happen and these are going to be some of the things you are going to sign on that paperwork so epidurals can cause spinal headaches these can be pretty severe lasting for a few days to a few months after birth and they're generally caused by spinal fluid leaking from when they injected that needle and um yeah, definitely not something you want to deal with. Um, epidurals can cause long-term back pain. I actually have a friend who has this ever since she's had kids. She's had back pain um, right near the site of the epidural injection, and it really limits what she's able to do. She can't do a ton of rigorous physical activity because of the epidural. Um, women are more likely to have more intense pelvic floor problems. Part of this is because they can't feel, you know, they're pushing the position they're in, and so they're more likely to have um, actually, they're double. They're they're likely to have double the chance of having severe vaginal tears and then other pelvic floor problems. Um, epidurals can lead to infections, bleeding. It can even affect mom's breathing. So they definitely can affect baby, which I'll get to in a minute. But um, it can cause mom to breathe more slowly or to just um, have trouble breathing. Rare, but possible. Um, it can lead to seizures, and then one in about 20,000 women are at risk of permanent harm or paralysis. So, you know, I talked about the beginning, um, 2.7 million women are getting epidurals in the US every year. Um, if one in 20,000 of them has some kind of permanent harm or paralysis, that's 134 women. Again, it's a small risk, but you don't want that to be you, the one who um, has some kind of permanent harm just because you got an epidural. And then very, very rare, but has happened, is possible, is death. Once you're injecting a needle and medication into your spinal cord, again, one of the most important vital parts of your body, things can go wrong. And so you just want to be aware of that. Next, let's talk about how epidurals can affect labor. So when you have an epidural, it's blocking those natural birth hormones, things like oxytocin, which gets your, your uterus to contract naturally. Um, once you're blocking those hormones, you're going to feel... Um, it generally is going to slow labor down, so it will triple the chance of needing to get pitocin, which is a horm it's a synthetic hormone to try to get labor going, but um, it's not the same. It um, pitocin generally leads to more painful and intense contractions because it's synthetic. Um, it's not gonna pitocin doesn't let you rest. You might have contractions back to back, really intense, so you won't have those minutes between contractions to rest, which is gonna make labor harder, more exhausting, and generally longer. Pitocin can also um, increase the chances of fetal distress and emergency C-sections. And I go more into this in another video, which you can check out if you wanna learn more about what Pitocin is and how it affects mom and baby. Um, but often when epidural is given, a pitoc Pitocin is also given. I've said it lengthens labor, but one study showed that epidurals lengthen the first stage of labor by up to 30 minutes, and the second stage by two to three hours. The second stage is when you're pushing. Um, I have had three natural births and I've never pushed longer than a few minutes. I mean, all my babies came out one or two contractions. I pushed once or twice and they pretty much just came right out. If you're going to epidural, you could be pushing for two to three hours. I've known, I've had two friends recently who've given birth and they pushed for one for three hours, one for five hours. I can't even imagine. That's like trying to poop for five hours. Can you imagine? Um, this is not something you want to be doing, pushing for that long. And when you are pushing that for long, it's more likely to, again, cause the baby to go into distress, exhaust you, and lead to things like emergency C-section. 
your body just can't do what it's supposed to do and it can't send signals um, between your vagina and your brain. Those nerves are there for a reason, for your whole body to know what's going on. And if you've injected drugs into your spine to try to interfere with that, things are gonna go wrong. Another thing is you can't feel when it's time to push when you're in labor. So for all my births, you know, I didn't have a midwife check if I was dilated 10 centimeters. I just knew, you know, my body, I could feel my body starting to push and that was time. Um, if you have an epidural, you won't be able to feel that. And so you just have to depend on the doctor or nurse to measure you and when they say you're 10 then you can start pushing but your body may not actually be ready and so that that's part of the reason why pushing can take so long you also miss out on feeling baby come out of you that is such a good feeling to know that you did it you have conquered labor you are pushing your baby out of you it's like just such a, a feeling of relief and accomplishment to feel your baby come out of you and then to hold her and i would not want to miss out on that for the world um, and unfortunately an epidural does mask all that feeling it doubles your chances of need instruments in labor, so things like forceps, vacuum. Again, I've had friends who just had these because they got an epidural and um, just completely stalled labor. Um, it increases your risk of C-section, which I've talked about a lot. And again, once you've had another one C-section, it's you're more likely to have more. Um, you won't be able to move again until till, you know all the drugs wear off for a while after delivery, which will limit your ability to go to the bathroom and nurse your baby and hold your baby and get that good skin to skin time. And I just want to say that pain is useful in birth. There is a reason that women feel pain. It, it's telling your body to release endorphins, to naturally manage that pain. Um, it's telling your body to release oxytocin, to stimulate more contractions, and it's helping mom guide helping the mother to get into the best position for her and for her baby it's telling her when to push and and that oxytocin it's powerful it's what bonds you to your baby it's what bonds you to your partner when you have sex um and it what it kind of puts mom in like this otherworldly state and if you have an epidural all of that is masked all of that is just kind of dulled and not able to happen so labor is definitely affected next let's talk about epidurals um how epidurals affect your baby. So generally babies who are born are moms of epidurals versus moms who didn't get an epidural are two to six times weaker. They often are more likely to need resuscitation, to have seizures, to have poor tone. Maybe they'll be purple instead of a bright red. And they often have lower APGAR scores, which is just a measure of how your baby's doing after they're born. Um, epidurals can affect baby's heart rate and breathing. Um, again, they can lower mom's blood supply, blood pressure, which can mean less blood to the baby. They can cause babies to have a reduced immune system and to be more likely to get things like asthma and ear infections and just kind of those chronic illnesses that some kids deal with. Um, epidurals also are shown in studies to affect breastfeeding. So often a mom who's gotten an epidural is just feeling yucky after birth is, um, yeah, those drugs do not make you feel good, feeling exhausted. Epidurals, so you know, they may be less likely to breastfeed right away. Epidurals blocks oxytocin, which we talked about, which is a hormone that helps you bond to your babies. Often babies who've been born to moms who've gotten epidurals need more time in the NICU or in the infant warmer, which again is delaying breastfeeding. And epidurals can cause the baby's um, sucking and rooting reflex to be depressed. So breastfeeding may be harder. And so um, one study showed that moms who've gotten epidurals in labor are um, on average ending breastfeeding by 24 weeks old versus breastfeeding to one or two, you know. Um, the WHO recommends that babies are breastfed till age two. So, you know, ending breastfeeding 20 weeks old, 24 weeks old is a lot better than not breastfeeding at all, but it's not the ideal situation. So yes, let me just remind you that your epidural will certainly affect you, it will certainly affect how your labor progresses, and it will certainly affect um, baby and, and his or her health. You may be wondering, are there any benefits in epidural? Why do women even get them? Somewhat, it depends how you look at it. So yes, pain is dull. You can't feel pain. You might just feel some pressure as you're pushing or having contractions. Um, in very few instances, an epidural may help a mom avoid a C-section if all other options have been exhausted. So if labor's been stalling or, you know, things are kind of going awry, if everything has been tried and the only way that the baby can come out is a c-section sometimes if mom's had, given an epidural it allows the body to rest or um you know just kind of relax for a bit to help get the baby out but it's very very rare um, i would just say most women can have their baby naturally women were designed to 
be pregnant to grow babies and to birth them out of their vaginas naturally without getting drugs without getting instruments without getting c-sections again things go wrong and i'm thankful for medic medical interventions when things go wrong but i would say in most cases a woman can have their baby without needing an epidural and finally when we talk about kind of the effects of epidural i just want to talk about there's more than just the physical effects so yes it can affect moms you know blood pressure heart rate or babies you know breathing or breastfeeding but um there's also more like social emotional mental things that go on when you have an epidural um women who don't have pain medications in birth um, report having greater satisfaction with their birth, um, generally have more confidence when they go to care for their newborn. I can personally say natural births are so empowering and confidence building. Um, it just feels so good to be able to say you did it, you had your baby naturally, um, you did the best possible thing you could for you and your baby. Um, I will also say I have a fear of needles, which is part of the reason I first started looking into having a natural birth, but um, I saw my mom go through cancer treatment and between the IVs and the chemo and the drugs and the just everything they put her through, the horror of all those medical inventions, I would never, ever, ever elect to have a very intense, serious, risky procedure like an epidural. Um, which can lead to other issues if I didn't have to. Um, having an epidural, again, is not anything like having chemo, but just similar, they're similar. You know, the getting the IVs, the fluids, the, the chance of things going wrong, the chance of emergencies happening, um, injecting things into your spine, having really intense drugs. Um, they are similar, and that's just not something I ever, ever want to have to deal with after seeing all that my mom went through. So that was a lot. There is a lot behind an epidural that unfortunately so few women know, so few OBs are even you know, educating women about. And so I just want to be a really good, clear source of um, the truth behind an epidural. And I'm not here to judge. If you've gotten one before or if you end up getting one, like I'm not here to judge. Um, I just want to. I just want to be a source of good information for women because, um, yeah, it just breaks my heart when women are having these really tough, you know, full of intervention births when they don't have to be that way. If you've watched this whole thing and you're wondering, wow, I don't know if I want an epidural. Um, you can't just have that conviction because 26% of women don't want one or don't plan to have one and 50% of those women have one. So you can't just show up at the hospital and say, I don't want an epidural and do nothing else because you likely will get one. I've had so many friends who said they wanted a natural birth, but they didn't really do any preparation or um, training. And so they showed up and they ended up getting epidural as soon as things started to go awry or as soon as contractions started to get really painful. So let me just say, if you don't want an epidural, if you want a natural birth, you need to mentally and physically prepare for birth. You need to find a provider who supports it, who has done natural births before. You need to make sure your partner is on board or you need to have some doula or someone to support you. Um, you need to have a birth plan and you need to have those strong convictions. Um, you can still do pain management without an epidural, but it takes more practice and education and um, training. Birth is like, um, labor and delivery is like running a marathon. You wouldn't just go run a marathon having never run before in your life. Um, so you don't want to just show up at labor and delivery having done no training, no preparation. Um, so you need to learn about things like moving in labor, doing water births, having birth affirmations, praying through labor, practicing how to fully relax so your uterus can um, be really effective. So if you're interested in any of this, I want you to be prepared and i have another video where i can show you just how to do that i have a, I have a um, lengthy video where i talk about how to have a birth plan what you want on it and then how to prepare for that labor um, so i encourage you to hit subscribe on this video so you can continue to get you know more information that i'm putting out there but then go to my next video where i talk about birth plans and help you create your own because that is the first step in being prepared to have a natural birth. I don't want you to be a statistic. I don't want you to be part of the 70% of women who are just getting an epidural, especially a woman who didn't want it in the first place. Um, I want you to know that you can do this. You are powerful, you are strong, and you are able to birth your baby naturally without having an epidural. Um, so thank you for watching. Stick around, I've got more coming for you, and go to that next video on birth plans so that you can really get ready to have the birth of your dreams. Thanks.